amazing. What is your creative process like? Like if you have, uh, if you decide you're going to make a film, what is it like from the moment you sit down? Like, do you have a concept in your head? Are you driving around your car and you're thinking about some guy who diffuses bombs? Do you like, where does it come from and how do you set about put bringing it to life? I mean, it's, um, I don't know that I have like the same process every time. Um, like I said, there's usually some, some experience that either I I'm, I'm told about or has, happens to me. Like for example, the action sequence that starts, um, I'll give you a very specific example that starts this, this, this show. I knew I needed an action sequence somewhere in the beginning of it because that's just like a demand of the form. Like you're selling a thriller, you need to have some action in the beginning, and it's also a way of like introducing people to the fact that this is a story with danger and stakes, and um, it's something I do well. So I knew that I had to have something like that. And then, I was kind of casting around until um, I was reading about um, an operation in Afghanistan, Operation Anaconda, and there was a there was a series of events that this was like in two thousand. The thing happened in two thousand two. There was a series of events in the beginning of it, and a friend of mine who had been on um, uh, he wasn't on that op, but he knew about it because he. I think he he overlapped with some of the team guys that were on it. Um, started talking to me about this this very specific thing that happened on a mountain in Afghanistan in 2002. Okay, and I heard the story from somebody that had like pretty good knowledge of it. And it wasn't like my story; it didn't fit like what I was doing exactly. But there were some pieces of that story, of the way that one. Navy SEAL commando thought that somebody that was on his team was dead and he wasn't really sure. Basically, a guy got shot and he was presumed to be dead. And, they, and he got left. And then there was a controversy about whether he was actually really dead or not. And I, I know that, that all the like particulars of that story didn't like make it over into, my, into what I ended up writing. But just that idea that you could be in combat, you know, under fire, see one of your buddies go down, be reasonably sure that he was dead, and then have a and then lay and leave because you had to for your own safety, and then later find out that maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. <clears throat> that like is is like stuck in me, you know, like I couldn't get it, I couldn't, it just like stuck. Mm. So it's when things like that stick that they become inspiration in a certain way. Or like, I remember talking to, um, I know this was actually in a book I read about somebody that had been kidnapped in Colombia, and she was a uh, she was like a political uh, consultant, or she was working on a political campaign, and she got kidnapped by a rebel group. And then she was held for a really long time, wrote a book about it. One of the things that she talked about in her book was that like a week into her kidnapping, she met a very senior guy in the rebel uh, camp. And she lost her temper with him. She was, she like unloaded on him. And cause she was fucking pissed cause she was being held captive and she was rude to him. And she like regretted it for the next like 10 years of her life. And I thought that like, that like stuck in me, like mm. how you could be kidnapped and be so fucking desperate to get out. And at the same time, angry that you're kidnapped. And then here you have the one opportunity. You're now talking to the guy who controls your fate and you can't control your emotions and you like, you know, let loose on him. Mm. And that's just like a very human thing, right? So like, it's just accumulating. I kind of, I kind of like scour out there and accumulate all these moments that seem real to me and that seem like, like illuminative of something else bigger. And then, uh, and then when I have enough of those, I start writing. 
So you just it's sort of like let it build in your mind until it's something you kind of have to get out. Yeah, and it's like a delicate moment. Like, how do you know when you have too much? Mm. And 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 there's also times on projects where I fucked that process up, and I've gotten so much information and didn't write it out, and it's like you miss that window, and you're like, ah, oh, I'll do it like next month or in two months, and then it's like it's gone. There's just like this moment in time where you're like, I have enough. If I learn one more thing. I'm going to get overwhelmed. And that's the moment when you have to say, okay, I'm going to put it all down. I'm going to now go into a place which is not, because I can intellectualize about all this stuff a lot and talk about like the different theoretical pieces of it, but where you just let that go and you follow your instincts and you're hoping that like your sense of truth or my sense of truth is like what's guiding it. I don't mean truth like this shit really happened. I don't mean like truth like a set of facts, but I mean like a, artistic truth, like a meaningful depiction of human life truth. Mm. Um, and you just hope that you have like, if you, it, for me, if I stay quiet enough in myself and like don't take an easy out and don't copy some shit I've seen before and don't, you know, succumb to anxiety about like getting it done quickly or whatever it is. And I just follow like, hey, there was something about that moment when I heard that story about or read that story about the woman who like lost it on her captor and like, I just need to stay with that curiosity and really try to honor it and not try to come to it with like a whole bunch of ideological fucking suppositions. Cause those are always wrong and not try to like really like slap myself on top of it, but just like try to follow the truth of that moment. Um, which is a hard thing to do. Like you have to be very relaxed and have a lot of like faith in yourself and stuff. And then, um, you just got to do that over and over and over again, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And if it's 10 hours, it's like, Oh my God, it's 600 pages of fucking scripts. I mean, I had a writer's room and, and, and writers helping me, but ultimately I ended up rewriting a lot of it. So, um, that's kind of the process. And sometimes it's, it's better to be, you know, at home and like totally comfortable in my like setup and I have everything really how I need it to be. And sometimes I, the stuff I write like in the back of a pickup truck bouncing on a jungle road on the way to set is like just as good, if not better hmm. where there's like a gun to my head and someone saying like, we're going to be on set in five minutes and you need to finish the scene. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes the pressure creates like, hmm. like a kind of like, I don't know like a kind of like uh, force.